whenever we're talking about decision making around drugs, um, this is something that the context is everything. Uh, the first thing that you need to do if you are on the brink of uh, making that jump from being a natural athlete to becoming an enhanced athlete, you really have to start with a checklist and understanding, okay, what are the needs of the division that I'm competing in that I'd like to compete in? Do I have the ability to see out these goals without the use of PEDs uh, or in, in a large part, can I, can I see out most of my goals without the use of PEDs or with very minimal PEDs? Um, and you know what I mean? Like you kind of, there's a whole checklist in the free ebook on my website, you go to my website, hit your email in there, send you a link, subscribe. Okay. Then you have the download link, your redirected. I don't know. You can then download the free ebook in which there is a checklist, a yes and no checklist. It's like, I don't know, it's like 12, 14 questions, something like that. And you can go through, and this is like your decision-making around starting PEDs. But one of the questions that I think I, I don't know if it actually is on the checklist, um, but I've talked about in webinars historically is how competitive are you? Um, do you have evidence to support that you are generally a competitive athlete, that you are someone who uh, can see out these goals, period? The hard part about this sport is, I mean, like genetically, there um, there is a structure per division that allows for, I would say, an easier, easier time, easier journey, allows for better placing with less work. Uh, in the bikini division, yeah, hey, like you, you are built like clavicularly. You got broad clavicles. Okay, you don't, you're not, not going to need as much delt, let's say, versus someone who is a little more up and down. Uh, the, like the width that they bring to stage, or just I guess have and walking around day to day life, everyday life, um, it is just very up and down, just very straight. Not a lot of. Um, not a high degree of difference in shoulders to waist to hips. Okay, that that's someone who they might have to technically build more muscle in order to see out their goals. Um, so you have that aspect of the structure. You have like, you know, even the genetic aspect. Are you someone who is kind of like fighting against the clock? Are you starting uh, competing later in life when and you were competing against people who are, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 years younger than you? Uh, then you have the other aspect. It's like, hey, uh, how how do you actually fare in competition? What is your ability as an athlete to get on stage and perform and put forth the things that you know you need to do? I mean, like even if you're not someone who came from like a, a theater, gymnastic, cheer, dance background, like can you get on stage and do the thing that you need to do? Can you display your physique? Can uh, like, or, or is it just, is that the hardest part? Is the hardest part getting on stage and displaying it? Are you just very uncomfortable with that? Hey, I'll tell you, that was me. That was me. Um, and that, that is me present tense. This is the part that it, it's not, it's not my favorite part. It's not the part that I enjoy the most. Um, I like the getting lean part the most. That part is really fun. I like the training part. The training part is also fun. Uh, the displaying like the actual competition, like, I mean, it, there are aspects to it. I enjoy, but the actual like presentation like that, that's not my favorite part. And if that's something that you are not very versed in, if that's something that like, frankly, you, you're just like, Hey, like your, your nerves or your mindset around getting on stage and presenting yourself. If that is such a disadvantage to where it then hinders your ability to place better. Okay. That is a component in this needs analysis. Now that was pretty lengthy, but for those of you who hung in there, hung in there on that very long winded, super compound, um, idea. Thank you. In in the essence of someone who has high aspirations and wants to compete in a division that has a high degree of muscularity and they're not good at presenting their their physique on stage um, they've competed and yet they find that like they, they're just somehow some some aspect of what they're presenting on stage is they're missing the mark on so thereby they're not placing you know they're not missing a win or missing a second place by one or two spots okay well this is something that we need to consider uh, for ourselves as athletes as well as coaches what is the likelihood that if we put drugs in place that this is going to make any kind of 
meaningful difference in this individual's career, in their career path. And I say career because I think journey to just, I, I it's so overused, but in your experience as a competitor, is this going to make a difference? And I think we really have to take placing in prior competition history, which is the Cliff Notes way that I could have just said that without taking y'all on this, this tangent. Um, if that individual is showing a track record that, you know, indicates, hey, maybe they, they are like at a regional level, they're getting fifth, sixth, seventh, they're struggling to even get into first call outs. Uh, even in first call outs, there's like visually, maybe, maybe they do place well, maybe they place third or fourth, but you can just see. You can see in the physiques first and second, you can see that there's a really big gap, whether that be in muscularity, which is a bigger issue, uh, or conditioning, which is a correctable issue. But I mean, depending on the athlete, that could be a bigger issue. Um, This is a pretty significant part in how we make those decisions around whether it's appropriate to put the drugs in place.